Okay, so this is Dr. Mitchell again, and we're going to walk through how to do a one-way ANOVA using JASP software. We'll walk through how to do the analysis, how to do post hoc tests, uh, and then even draw some plots with error bars, and even some other little details that JASP allows us to do. So before we do that, uh, one of the quirks, I guess, of using JASP software is that you have to have your data uploaded in what's called a CSV file. And so it's a pretty common file type in data. Uh, but in order to do that, we're actually going to start in Excel. And so I have a, just a sample data set here in Excel. Uh, I have basically four groups, class one, class two, class three, and class four. Uh, these are independent groups. So if we're doing t-tests, we would do independent t-tests, obviously, but we have more than two groups, so we have to do an ANOVA, uh, but separate groups. And uh, let's just say for this study, we gave each group a drug, and then we did uh, we acquired a test score after that. And so in each column are the test scores for each of those groups. You notice, obviously, there's a different sample size in each group. Now, uh, in Excel, we could just go forth with our data with our data analysis, but for JASP, we do have to reformulate our data a little bit because JASP has to, when it views data, it's gonna view rows as subjects. So if it looks at this data right now, it is gonna think the same subject is in group one, group two, group three, and group four, and that's just not the case. So I need to redo my data a little bit. And so I'm gonna make this into an independent and dependent variable. So I'm gonna go to column F here. My independent variable is class. Right, class one, class two, class three, class four. So I'm going to put class right there. My dependent variable, well, that's score. So we're just going to put score. And then at this point, I'm just going to um, put my values for class one. I'm going to copy those, put it in the score. And then at this point, I need to identify each of these values, each of these subjects in group one. And so I'm just going to put a bunch of ones here. Uh, I'm going to show you a shortcut in a second and there we go uh, I now need to go to class 2 we'll copy we'll paste now a shortcut here is I can put 2 in there and then if I just drag this box down uh, it'll copy that into all the cells and that'll save you a lot of time if you have a lot of data uh, we're gonna go to group 3 here we'll just do this really really quickly to get this done group 3 uh, and then we'll put our 3 drag this down and the last, certainly not least, is our group four. We will copy that. Um, and then we'll put four, drag this down, and we are good with our data set. Now, before I guess before I move this to JASP, I do need to get rid of the other data. And so I'm just gonna delete these columns, and now I'm good to go. So I'm gonna save this. Uh, it's going to ask me, do you want to put this in a CSV? Yes, I do. I hit yes, and now we're good to go. So I'm now going to move to my JASP software. And I've already opened this. And so it doesn't allow you to do anything until you actually import data. So I'm going to go to my left corner here. Uh, I'm going to open. Um, now, I put this in recent files, so I'm just going to open it right here. But you could go to your computer and find where the file is. Uh, I'm going to go to recent files, uh, drug treatment. Nova, which is the data we were just looking at, and there it is. Awesome. So now I can begin to do some analysis here. So for this test, we're going to do a one-way ANOVA. And so the one-way ANOVA, remember we're doing, we'll hit ANOVA there. There we go. Um, and now it wants to know some information. It wants to know, first of all, what are our variables? And so the first thing it wants to know is uh, what's a dependent variable? Well, the dependent variable here obviously is score. And so we are going to pull score into our dependent variable. Um, now, it wants to know what fixed factors are, which for this analysis is class. That's our independent variable. So we'll click on class and fixed factors. And almost immediately, you're going to notice a ANOVA table pops up very similar to what we've talked about in class previously. We have our sum of squares, our degrees of freedom, our mean square, our F value, and most importantly, we have our P value. And because that P value is less than 0.05, what this table is telling us is that, hey, there is something significant here. There's something statistically significant in the alpha level of 0.05. Uh, 
Now, the problem is, is that we, we don't know what, what it is. We don't know which group is significant from which group. And so at this point, we need to do some further testing. Uh, and so that's where we're going to scroll down. And as you notice, as we scroll down, you have a lot of different things we can do here. Uh, one of those, by the way, we could just click on descriptive statistics and it gets uh, data for each of our groups, mean, standard deviation, which is very helpful to you. Uh, we could do effect sizes, and that's going to put the effect sizes in our ANOVA table. We talked about effect size already. Um, but I want to go down to post hoc tests. And so I'm going to go to post hoc test. And this is going to allow me to do some post ANOVA analysis. So the first thing it asks is, okay, what variable? Well, I only have one independent variable. So this is really easy. We're going to look at class. So I'm going to move class into the area I want to test. And now as I scroll down, and I'm going to move that up here. As I scroll down, I now have a different table. This is a post hoc table. And I can use different uh, post hoc tests. Uh, a couple of these we talked about in class, the Tukey test, the Chef test. I'm going to use the Tukey one just because I can. Uh, there's other ones you can use here. They're going to be somewhat similar for this data. And what I'm interested in this table, there's two things. One is that this table is now comparing every group versus every other group. It's almost like it's doing multiple t-tests. So, and you'll see one verse two, one verse three, one verse four, two verse three, so on and so forth. And then the most important thing is all the way on the right side is giving us a p-value from the two key test it's done to see which groups are significantly different. And as I scroll down here, as I look at these p-values, because these are p-values, I'll notice that one of these, 0.022, is less than 0.05. Well, that means that that, that specific comparison is significantly, uh, statistically significant. And so if I look across, that comparison is group two versus group four. And so I can say that group two is significantly different than group four. And by the way, if you look at the group means, it's not a terrible shock. Group two has a mean of 78.7. .7. Group four has a mean of 88. Uh, if you look at the standard deviations, eh, you know, I'll, I'll go with that. That sounds good. And so now I know. Now I've done my analysis. I now know what, what is statistically different. There are other things I can do here. Uh, if I want, I can do a, a, a line graph. I'm going to go down to descriptive plots. And now it wants to know, OK, great. Uh, what do you want on your axis? Well, I want class on the axis, horizontal axis. And then immediately what it's going to do is make a nice little graph. And we can put error bars in this. We can display error bars with our standard error. Again, kind of like we've been doing in Excel. Nice and pretty. Now, I will tell you. Uh, JASP is not awesome at doing bar graphs. I would encourage you to probably use Excel to do really nice graphs. I mean, this is good, but it doesn't have a title. You know, the units aren't there. So it's fine. Uh, it's easy to do the error bars, but uh, it's a little, a little rigid when it comes to the, how it looks. Uh, and there's other things we can do here. We'll use some of these later on in, in other analyses. Uh, but that's how we do a one-way NOVA in JASP. Hope the video helped. And we'll see you in the next video.